Hey everybody. Yeah, water temperature starting to climb. Pretty sweet. My resting idle is at about a thousand RPMs. I probably already told you about that. But uh, yeah, today is the day that I make the video where I uh, go ahead and say the 1958 Rambler Super new floor that I welded in is all finished. Except for maybe a tiny, 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 tiny bit of work. A tiny, tiny, tiny bit of work. You know? Oh, I got, got this, this area really, I'm so happy about that. Look at that. Look at that. I filled in that hole. I welded in this new piece, cleaned up all the rest of this. There's a whole bunch of uh, big piece of shit right there that they put on at the factory. They kind of it's like a seam sealer or whatever, you know. And uh, I didn't even have to sc scrape off entirely all the rust because you just uh, use rust reformer paint, you know. And uh, there you go. That's all done. The area stops it uh, stops it stops from being rusted, and it. Uh, uh, doesn't rust anymore and then it gets protected so that's all good this this area didn't have as much of that uh stuff as uh the other side does but uh i still got it good and uh spray painted it with the rust paint and then also uh with the other rust paint that's like a top coat for it you know it's a lot of work it's a lot of work not even all of that other side i'd say only half of that Half of that work took me like nine hours. Just just half of that took me nine hours. <sighs> Did some more work under here too. I got another little piece that I got a weld on to this spot right here. And this is what I mean by just a tiny bit more work. You know, just to put that on there like that, fill that little hole. Same thing with this thing right here. You know, right up in here, just like that. You know, <clears throat> yep. This area over here didn't really take me that long because it was all so big and everything was nice and flat. You know, like this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece maybe took me only like 20 minutes of work, but stuff like like that right there not that not that up there but just like this right here down there there and over here on this side and all of that see that all of that That took me like seven seven hours or something like that you know but uh, I'd say yeah and uh, covered up the glass there I'd say that from when I started into when I when I finished and when I finished and the reason I was doing that with the engine is not because, just, well, it's not just because I wanted to show off a little bit and uh, rev the engine, but uh, I pulled all my spark plugs and they were all black. And the reason why they were all black apparently is um, it's got something to do with uh, um, how, how, how much your, your engine is uh either left at idle or there's some other I, I i read all about it there was a few different reasons why you could have uh, uh black spark plugs um but one of the reasons is is because uh, your engine is left at idle too too long and um that's all this engine ever really sees is just idle because they never drive it right so i just warm up the engine get the engine going give it some you know activity circulate the oil in there a little bit get it nice and hot and warm 
blah 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 whatever maybe you know send a little bit of juice to the battery but yeah yeah right um anyways um yeah so that's why i was driving the engine just to sort of give the spark plugs a little bit more some uh some some more action so that they uh hopefully won't be black as much but um yeah apparently um generators uh suck according to some people in the forum and uh, if you don't really the, have your engine operating at a high RPM for a sustained amount of time, it doesn't really send a lot of juice to the battery anyways. So that's probably why I continuously keep on having to like charge my battery. Like I have to charge it like, I've had to charge, I've had to put it on the charger maybe like four times since uh, the engine's been operational. Um, I got a new volt regulator, so I hope that uh, helps me out. But it probably won't because they apparently suck. But anyways, um... From the very beginning of this this job <clears throat> until the very end, from the very beginning until the very end, uh, which is just about to happen, um, I'd say I'd say I did this work. I started this work, you know, cutting out the templates and all the stuff like the paper and making the shapes and all that crap. I'd say I started around sometime in December. And it was a really ugly time. I didn't like it. I would make myself come out here for even just an hour at a time at night. I'd put a timer on the phone and just work away at making templates. And I really didn't want to. It was, it was miserable out. It was cold. It was crappy. It was dark. Um, always dark. And yeah, I just hated it. But I made myself come out here and make progress. Because uh, if you don't make progress, it's never going to get done. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, just talking about welding in um, uh, this piece, this piece, this piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, um, that piece, that piece, and like six or seven, like several tiny little pieces to make up, you know, stages of abandoned angle just to f make it all fucking work. You know, like that piece down there, that piece right there. You know, and uh, that 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 would that was like nine hours of work. So not including the big piece, the corner piece, that piece, and also this piece, right? And also this other like long piece here, which is like several parts actually, several parts. Also over here, you know. So like it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to like chop out tiny little shapes and weld them in and stuff like that. It takes a lot of time. So today is. March, I think, 24th. So from December, not the beginning of December, maybe the middle, let's just say, until now is uh, how long it took me to, to finish this job. You know, but it was, it was a lot of work, you know, like you can see a lot of the floor has been like replaced. There's all these little tiny pieces that I, that I had to do, you know, like angles and stuff like that. And then like a lot of this is, this is like flux core. So it was like a really lengthy process, um, which leaves you with work looking like this. And this is, this is MIG, right? I mean, like when you have nice clean work areas, you can run a nice bead, right? Or if you have really nice work areas like this over here, you can run like a series of little tacks and uh, make it look really nice, you know? But uh, sometimes you just can't do that. Even with the MIG, a lot of the work still looks really fucking rough. And, uh, yeah, it's a good thing I don't have this as a job because I'd have to redo it over again or get a different job or something like that. But um, stuff like this, oh yeah, I do. I have a small little piece right here to weld on. But uh, yeah, like so something like this, like that all took me like seven hours. Like this area right here, underneath all that, and then on this side right here, and then this. That, that took me like seven hours, you know, that took me seven hours to, 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 just to do that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it takes a lot of time. It's a big job. It's pretty serious stuff. It's, uh, yeah, but, uh, I started out with, uh, you, you know what that was like a four foot by three foot sheet of uh, 16 gauge metal. And this is, is all that's left. This is, this is all that's left. You know, like this is all that's left. 
Ya. <coughs> but uh, yeah, um, word of advice, if you're going to get yourself uh, set up with some gear and stuff like that, don't go cheap. You know, go expensive. This welding helmet costs me more than 300 bucks. It's a really good one. Like, it's got a really nice viewing area. It's a nice big viewing area, right? It costs more than 300 bucks. It's auto darkening. It's it's light. It's 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 good. You know, it's got like a digital thing on it where you can adjust your your delays and your times, like how long it stays darkened for, and all that stuff. But basically, it's a good a good a good way to spend some money because when you spend that amount of money on it, you're gonna be happy, you know, instead of being unhappy because like I bought a total I bought a total of three welding helmets all together before I bought that one well including that one you know and if, if I just went expensive the first time I would have not not spent so much money and like this this is like the the viewing area in this this welding helmet is like the size of a credit card you know it's not auto darkening and when you're underneath your car at night, you know, feeling claustrophobic and stuff, and you're not happy because it's dark and it it it, it sucks. It pays to ditch just to have a really good quality helmet that's gonna, you know, help you out, right? And uh, help you feeling help you feeling happy with the job, you know. When you're underneath the car, just imagine you're you're underneath the car. I want to make sure I don't stab myself <clears throat> on pieces of metal on the floor. But just imagine, just imagine coming home from work at nine o'clock at night, and you make yourself come out here and start working away. And you're down here, and you're probably about. Oh, I don't know, like, my face, I'm putting the camera right beside my face, and like, this is like, like seven inches of room, and then you got the welding helmet on top of that, so you're basically welding like this far away from your face at night, and it's just, it's just unpleasant and awful, and this is what one of the other owners of a Rambler was talking to me about that I was gonna have to do some crazy fabricating and this is this is exactly what he was talking about this work right here this took me this is one piece maybe both of these pieces maybe took me about two and a half or three hours of work most of its flux core oh crap I see a pinhole crap <sighs> But yeah, both sides, I had to do both that. And I also had to cut that open again because I forgot to paint the inside. Well, actually, no, I didn't forget to paint it, but... Well, actually, no, I, I did. I did. I did forget to paint it. Actually, no, that's not the story. The story is, is that I didn't know about weld-through primer. And this area on the driver's side and the passenger side of the car is double boxed, right? So right up until about here, right up until about here, there's a cavity <laughs> under here right there's a cavity under here but there's not a cavity over here which makes this a lot easier i'm just going to be able to, to f finish the the bottom of that with paint very easily but uh with that i had to cut it open and and uh spray it in there and uh seal it back up again <sighs> yep yep all right guys so uh i'm gonna look at the time here maybe come out and do a couple more minutes of welding before i have to go to work Yeah, I got a hard start problem if the car's been sitting for a while, like maybe about two weeks, it hasn't been run. And uh, what I end up having to do is because there's no um, there's no gas getting to the carb. Like there's a little bit of gas left over in the float bowl, but there's no gas getting into the carb. And what it is, is it's today's gas. Today's gas is the problem. I have done research. I have read people complaining about the same problems with their... You know, cars, there's Z28s, carbureted engines of all sorts of different kinds, whatever. And it's the gas. And it's because of the ethanol in the gas. And it 
it it it, it evaporates and it uh, it leaves the ethanol at the bottom of the of the, the the liquid and it kind of gets a little bit gummy it sticks to stuff and blah 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 so always put an ethanol additive into your gas if you do not have a fuel injected system or maybe you should anyways you might have to do a fact check on that but uh, what I have to do every time is I have to set up the you know you know jerry can over there blah 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 right and then I have to come over here and then I have to disconnect I have to disconnect my fuel line from the carburetor stick it into a pop bottle or get a pop bottle ready and turn on the ignition so that the fuel pump is drawing fuel and then I have to suck on that hose that goes to the carburetor and then really quickly as my mouth gets filled with gas stuff the hose into this bottle and then go quickly turn off the uh the car the engine so that uh yeah the, in the bottle doesn't get too full and uh it's fall on the ground but uh yeah so so uh that's how i solve that problem so if you're having a hard start problem you might want to consider doing what i just said because my engine starts my engine starts after i do that you look inside the carb you look inside the carb after you do that and you will see as you activate the throttle you will see substantially a lot more fluid being squirted into the carburetor after you do that and that's that's the case that's that's how it goes um, another thing I did is I spent a whole two days off not whole but most of two days off uh, polishing the valve cover um, I sanded it with 220 grit and then 320 grit oh it's nice and warm that's wonderful and then finally with six 600 grit and then I sprayed it with a clear coat because I noticed it was rusting and I was like well you, you got to address that it's rusting you know sort it out right and so I polished it up and uh, I was gonna paint it but then I decided you know what I'm just gonna leave it like that and uh, that's what it looks like so it's another another new shiny shiny thing underneath the hood which is pretty cool um, yeah uh, I have a tip for anybody out there who's doing something that's like this if you are if you are, what am I trying to say here? Right, if you are using a can of clear coat or something that's a pressurized can, like a spray paint can, and it stops coming out, don't smash it on the ground like I did. Or go ahead, you know, do it if it makes you feel good. But what you should do is you should take off the cap, right? Take off the cap of the spray can. Right, like I smashed it. I smashed it good. It's all fucked up, right? Take off the take off the sprayer, right? This is the can, right? Take off the sprayer. Soak this in some alcohol, like uh, you know, like seventy percent or ninety percent or whatever alcohol, and then take this 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 can, right? And then put it in some water that is very hot you know like put it on the stove get it steaming and then put that into the pot of steaming water it'll heat up the contents of the can and it will make it want to come out even faster because it's under pressure put that cap back on the top of that and it should be completely clean and not clogged it will be completely open for the product to flow through and it will solve your problem and that's how i finished doing that job is uh, I phoned up the guy at the paint store and he said, yeah, do this and this and this. And I did that and that and that and it solved the problem. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to pass on that bit of advice to you. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to it and do some more uh, welding. And then after that, uh, some, some other time, I will uh, make another video of myself uh, prepping and then painting this. And then after that, I'll put the seats back in and uh, go from there. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, it's been about a month and a half since I made a video, or maybe a month. I don't know. Might have to do a fact check on that. Anyways, 1958 AMC Rambler Super Part, maybe 105 or 106. Who knows? Alright, thanks a lot everybody. Bye-bye.